What's up? Thank you for being here for uh, another of our afternoon devotions as we continue to walk through uh, the 12 apostles and see uh, just what we can learn about each one of them, but may, really even more importantly, what can we learn from them? Um, lessons from their life and ministry that we can apply to us. So anyway, I've, I've really been enjoying this study. I hope you all have been too. So happy Friday to you. Um, as always, let's start with what are you thankful for today? I am thankful today is Cardinals opening day. I'm excited to get some baseball back. I'm excited for um, opening night. Um, it's obviously different this year, but um, anyway, thankful to have that back. Um, and hopefully that goes well for everybody. So anyway, um, all right. So yeah, if you are watching, say hi. Um, let me know what you are thankful for today on this Friday, July the 24th. All right, let's get to quarter teen games for today. So last time, um, oh, hello, Beth. Thankful for the Unreached app. Yes, me too. We have been enjoying that in our family recently. So um, for those of you that are unfamiliar with that, just a quick shout out. Call, look up the app Unreached of the Day. Um, and it talks about sort of different people groups that need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ um, and how you can pray for a different people group each day. It's really, really cool. Definitely recommend that. So um, anyway, yeah, totally agree, Beth. Thanks for that shout out. That's really great. Um, all right, quarter team games. So last time, um, question was how many chapters are in the Bible? Got several guesses. So thanks to those who uh, participated in that. The correct answer is 1,000. 189 chapters spread throughout those 66 books, which is, I don't know, what, about 17 or 18 chapters per book on average, I think, if I'm doing that math right. Anyway, whatever. Closest guess was Eric with 1,000. So one more quarter added to Eric's total. So congrats to him. Today's quarter, on this date, in 1897, Amelia Earhart was born. Okay. Um, the question for you, she's probably most famous um, for being the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. Um, the question for you is what year did she do that? What year did Amelia Earhart fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean? There's your question. Let me know in the comments or in the chat. Uh, or send me a text or something. Let me know what you think about that. Amelia Earhart, first solo, woman solo flight across the Atlantic. All right, let's get to our devotion for the day. Today we are up to uh, our 10th of the 12th, 12 disciples. Um, today we are talking about Simon the Zealot. So again, as I've mentioned before, as we get further into these, we know less and less about these men. Um, and legit, the only thing we know about Simon is that his name is Simon, and he was a zealot. That's it. Now, what does that mean, zealot? Because that's not, I don't know, that's not a phrase we use now, right? I mean, hopefully you know what the word zeal means, just being passionate about something. Um, but uh, for, for back then and there, this term zealot meant something very specific, okay? This was sort of a, a movement uh, you could almost say a political party in Israel at that time. Not the same way we think of political parties where like, you know, they're, they're nominating their candidate and voting in elections, but um, they, they had this group and they had their own thoughts about how Israel should be ruled, um, how things should run in society. Um, the biggest thing about them that they were so zealous about, they hated the Romans. They hated the fact that the Roman Empire ruled over Israel, and they did not think that that should be the case. They thought Israel should rule themselves, which most Jews at that time wanted, but they were so passionate about it that they went to extreme measures to try and force Rome out. Um, so they were very militant and violent. Um, the kind of crazy thing is they thought they were doing God's work, uh, by murdering Roman soldiers or Roman political leaders um, because they viewed Rome as the enemy of God and of Israel. 
Um, I mean, if they were around today, we would call them assassins. We would call them terrorists. Okay. Um, that's just, that's a fact. That's how they operated. Okay. Sort of this guerrilla warfare, sneaking up behind Roman soldiers and stabbing them in the back. Um, this is what this group, the zealots were known for. And Simon was among them, um, which raises some inter interesting questions. I mean, number one, why would Jesus recruit someone from that group? Um, probably some good lessons about uh, forgiveness and no matter what's in our past that we can follow Jesus and have an impact for the kingdom. Um, I think it, it raises an interesting question about was Simon a murderer? Um, I, look, we don't know for sure because we don't really have a lot of details. It's possible. I tend to think not just because we see things like with Matthew or Zacchaeus as tax collectors where they had to pay back what they had stolen and ripped people off from, right? We don't have any record of something like that from Simon, um, but maybe that's possible. We don't know. Definitely a, a passionate, interesting character if he's a part of that group. Um, but so what, we get to the end of his life, okay? So again, as one that we don't have a ton of detail about, there's kind of some mixed stories about what happened with him. Some um, some say that he preached in maybe Egypt or Persia or Armenia, which is sort of like mm, Eastern Turkey, north of Iraq and up in that area. Um, some say that he preached in Egypt and Northern Africa. Um, some even say that he maybe sailed from there all the way up to the British Isles and preached the gospel. We just don't know for sure. And along with that, we're not entirely sure where or how he died. We know that he died for his faith. All the stories say that. Some say he was crucified in Jerusalem. Some Ethiopian Christians have an account that he was crucified in Samaria. Um, there are multiple accounts that uh, give that he was sawed in half in Persia. Um, eek, not, not good. Um, but whatever it was, wherever it was, he died because he was preaching the gospel and living passionately for Christ. So, all right, let's get to the end of this. What, what can we learn from Simon, from this guy that we don't know a ton about? Okay. One thing that's, one lesson that I think is really cool to think about is Simon the Zealot was, was a disciple, a group of this 12, along with Matthew the tax collector, okay? Matthew the tax collector, who's viewed as a traitor to his country and allied himself with Rome and helped Rome rip off the people, is in the same intimate group of 12 with Simon, who hates the Romans and values devotion to God and Israel above all else. These guys could not be more opposite, and yet they are both a part of this group of 12, which I think is an amazing example to the rest of us that no matter who it is and no matter what we might disagree with them about, we can get along and love one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, God has called us to that kind of love and unity. The other thing that I see in Simon is if he is a follower of Jesus, he would have had to set aside um, a lot of what was going on with his role as a zealot. Um, he would have had to put aside his love for his country to follow Jesus. Not that he didn't love Israel anymore, but that he had found a higher calling. He realized that following Jesus was greater and more important, and he was passionate about Jesus and sharing the gospel more so than killing Romans to get them out of Israel. So, um, yeah, a great example of priorities and what's ultimately most important. Not bad to love your country. Let's make sure we love Jesus more. Um, that's where we're at with that. So anyway, that's it for today. Next time, we've got uh, number 11, whose name is Judas, also known as Thaddeus at different points. So we'll talk about him on Monday. Fair warning, there's a good chance we've got some stuff going on next week. I may not be available to go live on Monday. There will be a video. It will go up at 3. If I'm available, it'll be live. If I'm not going to be available, I will record it ahead of time. But either way, tune in Monday at 3, and we'll talk about Judas, a.k.a. Thaddeus. All right? I love you guys. Enjoy your weekend. Hopefully, I'll get to see you on Sunday at church. And, uh, yes, we will see you later. Adios.